In today's Gospel reading, we have a kind of repeat of, of yesterday's Gospel where our Lord says, may they be one as you and I are one. But our Lord goes further and as I am in you and you are in me, so we are in them and may they be in us. And, you know, in what sense are we in God? Well, God is everywhere. We exist in God. It is only through God that we exist. So in, in one sense, we are all in God. but. God is not in everyone to the same extent. So through baptism, we are united to God. God dwells within us. And God comes and enters into our souls. So through baptism, we receive the indwelling of the Trinity. The presence of the Holy Spirit is further strengthened or increased when we receive the sacrament of confirmation. And so we enter into this spiritual union with God even though we retain our identity, we are always who we are. But God, because of his presence within us, is able to transform us to enable us to become more and more like him. Now, yesterday I spoke on, on the importance of, of unity and, and we have to be united in the truth. It's the truth that sanctifies us. We, know to, we need to know the fullness of the truth and to follow the fullness of that truth. But here, you know, our Lord, when he says, you know, may they, uh, may they be where I am, and that he wants, to sh wants them to see his glory, well, basically our Lord is saying he wants them to be fulfilled. He wants them to see his glory so that they will benefit by his glory. In other words, that they will have a share in his glory. And all of this is a manifestation of his love. And very often I've spoken about, you know, romantic love and young people when they are madly in love they just feel so happy so ecstatic so fulfilled in many ways and if you think about it more deeply you know what exactly is love right it's 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 love is is an appreciation of the beauty or the goodness in the other but it's more than just an appreciation. It's, it's a moving towards that other in the sense of wanting to glorify that other even more, to, to enhance that beauty, that goodness even more, to share in that beauty and goodness. And to be loved by that beauty and goodness is, is very fulfilling to the one who loves and, and is loved. And it's almost as if when, when, when we love someone and that person loves us in return, in other words, they appreciate our love for them, it's almost as if through the act of loving, some good is created in the beloved. The good of knowing that they are honored, knowing that they are praised, but somehow they are interiorly transformed because of that love that they experience, but also because of the love that they are manifesting to others. In other words, when we manifest love to others, love becomes present within us. And that love is, is, is fulfilling, it's, it's um, overwhelming in many ways, or it can be. Now notice at the very end of today's Gospel reading, our Lord says, I made your name known to them, and I will make it known so that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. So that the love with which you have loved me may be in them. Well, what, is, what kind of love does the Father have for the Son? How great is the love of the Father for the Son? Can we compare it to human love? It's far, far greater than any human love. But, but think about what he's saying there. So that the love with which you have loved me may be in them and I in them. What a lot of people don't realize when they read this passage is when we think of the Trinity, the love between the Father and the Son or the love for the, from the Father for the Son or for the Son from the Son for the Father is really the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is the love between the Father and the Son. So when Jesus says, so that the love with which you have loved me 
may be in them. What he's see, really saying is, may the Holy Spirit be in them. And when we realize that the Holy Spirit comes to us through confirmation and is present to us, this is the love between the Father and the Son. So yes, God dwells within us, but it's, it's kind of like we take it for granted. We don't appreciate what that really means. So when we have the Holy Spirit within us, we are enabled to love as God loves. We are enabled to love the Father as the Son loves him. We are enabled to love the Son as the Father loves him. We are enabled to love our neighbor not just as ourselves, but as Christ loved us. Now, of course, the Holy Spirit doesn't override our free will, so we have to choose to do this. And if we have bad habits, those bad habits may prevent us from truly loving. But you see, the more that we love, the more love is present within us, and the more fulfilled we are, and the more we will be loved by the Father and the Son also. So the Holy Spirit helps us to do this. So this week, as I mentioned, we are praying or doing a novena, hopefully, to the Holy Spirit in preparation for Pentecost. So even though we've received the Holy Spirit when we were confirmed, the ideal is that we are ever more fully open to the Holy Spirit, to the love of God within us, which is what f truly fulfills us and makes God and his glory and his goodness present in each of us. Just a reminder, tomorrow is First Friday, so uh, after the 7.30 p.m. Mass in the evening, we will have the all-night vigil of adoration again. We will lock the doors probably around uh, 9 p.m. just for security reasons. So if you're interested in participating in that, you're welcome to come and uh, remain all night in adoration here in the church. And on Saturday, um, this coming Saturday, we will have a funeral at 10.30 for Andrew George Albert. The funeral mass will be in Tamil. May his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen.